great. Mo and Jess Kill Susie is a timeless hostage drama with strong female characters pushed by frustration to take the law into their own hands. Now a new full Te Reo Māori version comes to the stage and we are pleased to welcome two of the stars. Please welcome to the cafe, Ani Piki Tuari and AC Mabry. Yeah! <laughs> welcome guys. Hi. Ani Piki, tell us a little bit about what is the story behind it all? Well, it's, it's, it's um, a little bit... I don't know, Ace, I might need your help yes, on this one, do. actually. Because <laughs> it's really quite complex. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a play by Gary Henderson, mm. and it's quite an old play. And it's written, when it was written, it was written in a future that wasn't around yet. It's not written around any specific event, but it is about two characters pushed to the absolute limit by poverty, yeah. uh, mainly by poverty. poverty yeah. um, and therefore, they, they, they take matters into their own hands, and they kidnap... A policewoman and uh, hold her hostage in order to get what they want, which is just better living quality, which is yeah. pretty relevant. And you know? Asia, yeah, who wow. do you who do you play? I play Susie, the cop who's yes. um, held hostage. Yeah. Okay, and Anipiki? I play Jess, and Jess is the the desperate mother, um, willing to do anything just to ensure that her kids have a better future. Oh, it sounds intriguing. It and is. you've taken yeah. the whole thing and you put it into Te Reo Māori. Yeah. Why? Why are the reasons behind this? Oh, oh, oh. Go on. <laughs> she says, thank you for asking. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I, I think first and foremost, um, Gary Henderson is definitely one of our director, Tainui Tukiwaho's um, favourite writers. Mm. Um, and Gary Henderson is just amazing. His work is genius. Um, but secondly, you know, it, it's a really difficult play. For myself as a Māori, it's actually quite confronting. It's a confronting piece mm. because... You know, it puts these two, uh, particularly Māori characters, Mo and Jess, um, in that situation, mm. a hostage situation, where, you know, they could be potentially um, regarded as the bad guys. Right. Mm. You know, and it's often that we hear or see a lot of non-Māori stereotyping Māori as the bad guys or savages or they're unintelligent. Mm. Um, but really, these women are quite the opposite. They're very strong. So you obviously looked at the play and translated it into t t Reo rather than looking at how easy it could translate into Tereo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. Annie's done an amazing job of translating it. It's beautiful what mm. she's managed to do. It's awesome. Thanks. That's all right, mate. And the interesting <laughs> thing as well is that you aren't a fluent speaker. Yeah, Asia. that's right. Um, that's right. I, I have very basic reo, um, and it, it's sort of a, a whittle, a challenge for me to, to give this a go. I've got five pages of straight dialogue in Tereo Māori um, and it's scary you know but it's awesome you know you've got to challenge yourself and through me doing this I sort of throw the whittle down to other New Zealanders particularly Pākehā New Zealanders whether you're white or any culture because Pākehā can encompass any culture mm -hmm. that isn't Māori um, mm -hmm. To pick up, pick it up, pick up the challenge and, and do some real Maori. Why not? You know, you ask why do that. I used to go, well, why not do it? Yeah, you know, yeah, like that's yeah. sort of the thing. You know, well, why should I speak to real Maori? Well, why shouldn't you speak it? You live in New Zealand. It's one of our languages. It's the same with sign language. You know, I think yeah. we should all have a go at doing sign language as well. That they are our languages and let's embrace them. Well, great that you're putting it on stage for people to see. So, if somebody comes along who isn't fluent in Maori, will they understand what is happening? I think even if they didn't understand, um, you know, the dialogue as such, they'll still feed into the drama right. of what's happening. So they may they may understand what's happening, but not particularly what's being said. Um, yeah. And I think to our director, he's done such an amazing job in terms of ensuring that we are physicalising. Is that even a word? Yeah. You know, uh, physicalising everything that we're saying. So this. Could be like, I'm watching TV, mm. and so we actually physically like, you know, yeah. action that right. so that people can follow what we're saying. It's even very if they don't entertaining, know what and you may not get all the subtle mm. little points that are coming across, but I think you'd walk out going, well, I didn't quite get it all, but I was intrigued, or yeah. I, was, I was in it, and I was with you guys. So, yeah. And I think that that's good enough reason to go see a show, even if you don't see Absolutely. It. <laughs> well, yeah, it, well, exactly. It's like watching a subtitled movie sometimes. Yeah, you, know, you get yeah. into it, and then you start feeling it. Yes. Yeah. And, and why do you think, Annie Picky, it's important to tell stories in Te Reo Māori? I think... Um, for myself, as a Te Reo Māori speaker, it's my first language, as well as a teacher of the language, um, my sort of mission or purpose is to make Te Reo Māori more accessible um, and accepted, as well as not make, as well as making sure that it is not as intimidating to people who may not understand or know mm. Te Reo Māori. 
So that's why I think it's important to put reo on any platform, mm. Mm. Um, be it through the arts, through the media, what, whatever that is. So you teach, you see, you teach. So are you going to get all your students to come along and watch Absolutely. you? Absolutely. <laughs> It'll be an assessment yeah. that yeah. they need. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all over. Yeah. 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 OK, well, can I ask you this then? AC, as somebody that's come into it and really thrown down the challenge, I guess, yeah. to other people, do you think it should be something that is taught at schools? Uh, we've had this debate a lot. This is a big one, eh? <laughs> this is a big conversation. I love that. Yeah. yeah. It's good. No, absolutely. I think so. Um, I mean, I think it should be available at all levels, but I definitely think at primary it should be taught. It should be compulsory. It should be part of the curriculum. Um, again, like I said, I reference sign language as well. You know, these are our languages. I think te reo Māori should be... Because the more you incorporate that into the primary school environment, it, it becomes a part of our culture. And as New Zealanders, we should embrace that and not kind of push it aside mm. and go, oh, oh, I'm not that. But we are. We are, we are in this country. This mm. is our country. This language is a part of our country. Flying thing. <laughs> um, so let's embrace it as opposed to shy away from it because mm. of whatever the thing of, oh, well, why should I do that? And again, why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. Well, and this is a great way to embrace it. I wish you the best of luck. I challenge Thank people you. to get along and see it. Sounds Thank fascinating you. as yeah. well. Yeah. Fun yeah. and fascinating really, yeah. and very, very important. For tour details of a kore, a muri, a hokua, close, uh, you can head along to the website which is on screen.